It's my feel good breakfast show. Welcome back. I promised I'd get through this link without mentioning Uppington once I've already failed. But yes, winter is here. Um, so uh, two are those uh, winter camping adventures where we've got to pack some different gear. Uh, have you ever gone searching online to look for something as simple as, let's say, a sleeping bag and then have been absolutely clueless as to what to invest in? I mean, we all sleep, surely I should know this, but no. Fear not, uh, Pierre with the gear is here with the gear to break down the types of sleeping bags bags out there and most importantly how best to choose one for ourselves uh, how many nights a year do you spend in a sleeping bag morning graham <laughs> um sure hard to say some some years it's a few hundred and some some years it's uh, a, a, it's a half a dozen but um yeah it's uh, when you go on your next adventure you are leaving the comfort of your own home exactly so you need to take your own creature comforts with you and one of the most important things about a multi-day expedition is a, a comfortable night's rest there are so many different sleeping bag variations out there. It gets so nuanced in that space and each has kind of a value proposition and a use and they all look amazing, which is often where we get lost. I think, well, certainly me when yes. I walk into uh, these stores. So how do we know what's <laughs> the right choice for us and the right moment? 100%. So um, I thought long and hard about this and, <laughs> and choosing the right sleeping bag is very much like a, a relationship with your spouse or partner. Oh, wow. How okay. much are you willing to sacrifice <laughs> and how much uh, are, you, are you willing to compensate? Because um, we're... Uh, well, over here I've got examples of three sleeping bags and there is a, is a non-technical sleeping bag and you can already see that it's quite a lot bigger than a slightly sure. more so technical we're driving there. We're driving there with that sleeping bag. Yeah, yeah. yeah, so my question to my customers usually is where are you going and how cold is it going to be? Because if I know where you're going, I know you're driving there and space is not an issue. Or you might be walking there and space will be an issue. And um, that's when we go into the finer intricacies of which sleeping bag is best suited for you. In fact, you might need more than one sleeping bag because uh, yeah, if you're asking the question which sleeping bag is best for you, you're probably buying your first one, which should be a good versatile sleeping bag. Okay. I eventually, after all these years, have four sleeping bags and each one with its own specific end use. I love that. So you're like, what kind of adventure is this? Okay, it's time to get Bessie out. We are <laughs> heading to the mountains. I love that. Look, I'm just assuming you name them. I do name them. <laughs> yes, I, I do. Have no doubt. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Okay. Um, size because it can be a little bewildering as well i mean you're going to require a very different size sleeping bag to me so how do we know yes. what's the, the kind of um baseline that we work off most sleeping bags are made in a standard size of roughly about 220 centimeters long which is suitable for pretty much for everyone most, except maybe uh, urban on a on a bad day well, yeah. urban, <laughs> we've made a bag specifically for him and over here we've got our comfy cozy yeah. <laughs> it's extra length it's extra width but what we've also done with our bags uh, like the entry level bags and even this one, they come with a left and right hand zipper. If you're only buying one, you'll have, buy a zipper to the opposite of your hand. So you want a left-handed zipper if you're okay. right-handed. But if uh, uh, a, a sleeping bag is designed to trap body heat, and what's better than somebody else's body heat? So yeah. you zip two sleeping bags together, <laughs> and you have a double bed for that extra oh, bit of I love that. Listen, I've got two young kids as well, so everyone will be in there, and, <laughs> and that'll be like in a Christmas bed inside the lounge every weekend. I love that, dude. That's beautiful, That's man. That's part of the fun, huh? So exactly. we're in the lounge with the kids. Um, I love that. So what, is there a danger, like, because uh, you don't want to make the wrong choice when you're investing in something like that. So what is a pitfall often that people might kind of make that wrong choice in the beginning? Brilliant. So do some research before you go. Very yeah. important. Find out what type of weather conditions you're expecting. Then use that as your guideline when looking at temperature ratings on a sleeping bag. Aha. So we give them three ratings. There's a, a risk, a transition, and a comfort. So if you sleep very cold I'm at the comfort rating okay like me in the middle of winter I might just put a sheet over and, and, and still sleep without a shirt then I'll <laughs> go with the, uh, with the transition rating and the risk rating is one that you should well you'll probably survive but you won't have a comfortable night's sleep <laughs> but so you'll use that as your stuff. guideline yes oh I love that and so I mentioned my family it's like my wife me and my son represented all in one rating very I, well said. I love that there is also something about the planning process and getting your gear together before going on an adventure. And it yes. works twofold because you're preparing yourself mentally for what you need and 
also getting inspired and excited about mm. it. So, and, and that's where the gear really comes to be. So what advice do you have for someone getting themselves set up for that first big adventure? Well, proper preparation prevents poor performance, pronounced by Pierre Pinot, <laughs> is that um, a sleeping bag only works effectively if you use it effectively. So if you're sleeping directly on the ground, you will be cold even in the most expensive technical sleeping bag. So a mattress is key. You can either take a big fluffy mattress like that or one that's compact, depending on size and, and weight once again. Oh, Inflatables brilliant. and non-inflatables. Sleep in less clothing, empty the bladder, don't drink too much alcohol, eat a lot of food to heat up the body. And if you're very cold, do a quick run and exercise. Before you jump into the bag, you gain some body heat and you're and adding that, body heat That to gets it. trapped in there. I love that. Advice for adventure and advice for life. Please, can you show this all the come together? One, <laughs> the prototype, which I've it's coming into stores soon. Oh, it has its no. own food friendly zippers so that you oh. don't have to get out of bed at night. You have arms for your uh, armholes and a front zipper so that if you do need to go for a pee at four o'clock in the morning at below freezing, you actually don't even need to get out of bed. You are safe. And the wind chill factor and, let, let me add, you look very cool as well, Pierre. I absolutely love this. And this is not even for adventures. This is just a walk around <laughs> the house, man. I absolutely <laughs> love this. Every box ticked, stay connected by adventure. That's how we live. And with Cape Union Mart, they are getting us connected. You can get up to 20% off an amazing array of casual jackets, some beautiful knitwear that does the job, sweats, shirts, all available from now up until the 2nd of June. You can go shop it in store or online. CapeUnionMart.co.za is where you'll find it. Pierre, with the gear, you've taken it to a new level, my friend. <laughs> He's never getting out of this, not for the rest of the day. He's going to go run 100 kilometers. Look at it. <laughs> oh, I love it. <laughs> <laughs>